Yo, 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 what is up? Hopefully I'm getting this video up before the New Year's. Right now it's Friday, December 29th. And I was going through my wallet, saw this card that I have, wanted to share a quick story with you. Something I think might be a bit motivational, a little bit informative, and overall help you out in 2024 and beyond. So I got this card right here in my hands. I don't know if you can kind of read this. I'm gonna to try to put it near the camera. Um, but basically what the card says is, hello, I'm Death. Please forgive me for bothering you. I'm selling this card to see my way through. Will you kindly buy one? Pay any price that you wish. And I always keep this card in my wallet. To be honest, it's one of the most treasured things I have. And I know that probably sounds weird. You're thinking to yourself like, how would a card be treasured? Well, who cares about some like tiny piece of paper with a smiley face? Well, there's a story behind this card and why I have it and why I keep it. So the story behind this, Back when I was in college, if you've seen any of my other content, or if, you, if you've listened to any of my podcasts or read any books that I've written, you probably know the story. But back when I was in college, I got kicked out of school twice. Not, it wasn't for anything too super serious, nothing, you know, no drugs, um, not even for like academic reasons. It was purely financial. Couldn't pay the tuition. I got kicked out twice. And it was shitty to put it bluntly, it was super shitty. It was a horrible time. Um, in hindsight, it was actually quite, uh, in hindsight, I'm glad that all that stuff happened to me. I'm always happy for the bad things that happen, the bad things that happen in hindsight. Um, but in the moment when you're living through certain things, it just sucks. It's a terrible experience, especially if you're not used to living a certain way, it's awful. And so at the time I was super broke, um, very unhappy, unhappy with who I was as an individual, unhappy with how I was kind of progressing through life. Um, I felt like I wasn't reaching my potential and I think that's what led to me being so depressed. Um, couldn't get a girlfriend, like I said, not in good shape, was eating shitty foods all the time, which contributed to my shitty physique and my shitty health and my probably in my lack of ability to get a girlfriend, I'm sure. Um, and just my shitty mindset overall. And I was working in this gas station. I was working in a lot of jobs at the time. Walmart, movie theater, um, bar slash a restaurant, kind of like an Irish pub. But one of the jobs I was working at was this gas station called Snappy's. And I remember at this one point, you know, I was working at Snappy's and if you've ever worked a minimum wage, I'm not sure what the minimum wage is now, but when I was working, at this gas station, was, the first thing I was getting paid was like the bare minimum wage, and it was like seven fifty, like seven fifty an hour. So I was making like no money, and at the time I really needed money, but so I was, that's why I was working multiple jobs, but making like no money doing this, um, making like seven fifty, and I literally worked like as much as I could. Whenever someone wanted to go on vacation, I took their shift. If someone you know wanted to clock out early, I took their shift. If someone couldn't come in because they're sick, I took their shift. I was the go-to guy when someone didn't want to work or someone couldn't work. They always called me and said, hey, do you want to work? Do you want to take the shift? I know you've been working like eight hours today, but do you want to work an additional eight hours for extra money? Sure, I'll take it. I'll take that 7.50 an hour. And I took pride in working as much as I did. But of course, you work so much for so little, it doesn't help that much. You know, you're working, even if you work extra hours, I think at most I was making like 800 a month, 700 a month. Uh, and that's kind of when I was working extra hours too, if I recall correctly. I wasn't making much at all. So eventually, um, I kind of met the owner of this gas station and he was opening a new location. Sorry about this, I'm just adjusting my phone. Um, he was opening a new location, kind of, a little bit off campus because this is when I was I was still living on the Penn State in the Penn State area I wasn't living on campus because I couldn't because I wasn't a student but I had an apartment off campus with some roommates um, I had like three or four roommates and at least at this time and so he was moving to a new location it was gonna be more of a, a convenience store rather than a gas station so of course you couldn't like take your car to fill up but there would be food, there would be snacks, and it basically just picture any convenience store, but put the Snappies branding on it. And that's what we were opening up, or he was opening up. And so he needed help moving furniture, he needed help moving equipment. And he said, oh, if you are interested, I can give you some extra hours, we'll pay you overtime, you can help move this equipment, and all this stuff. And it wasn't light, by the way, it was not a fun job. And I said, you know what, I need the money. So sure, let's do it. So moving this equipment, um, and he ended up saying, you know, if you help with all this, I appreciate the effort. I'll give you this big raise if you do it. And so he, we go through all this. And the raise, by the way, is a very good raise, a fantastic raise. 
I got bumped up from a whopping 750. I got bumped up from 750 an hour to a whopping eight dollars and like 75 cents. It was fantastic. An extra dollar and 25 cents for like destroying my legs, hurting my back, by like lifting all this like heavy equipment, pushing stuff around, trying to organize this like little corner store space. Fantastic, great pay that I was making at the time. So we go through all that and he said, if you want to, you know, we would like it if you, when you have free time, because we're trying to, they were trying to find more employees for that location, but they were having trouble finding some. He said, if you want to, um, when you're not working at the gas station, which was much further away and I walked everywhere, I didn't have a car, so I walked to work every day. He said, if you didn't want to do that, you could work at this um, corner store, which was a bit closer. I think to walk to the gas station at the time, it took me about 35 minutes. It was like a 35 minute walk to get to the gas station. Um, and it would take me about 15 minutes to get to the corner store. So definitely a shorter walk. Um, so I said, yeah, sure. Why not? You know, it seemed like a chill location. It was closer to campus. So you get more college students coming in. It wasn't like gas. Um, you're just kind of selling like, you know, like papers for those of you that know what I mean when I say papers, you're selling papers, um, snacks, juice, um, stuff like that. We didn't serve like alcohol. So you didn't have to worry about like carting people for that. Um, cigarettes, of course, and like dip, things like that. Um, it was actually pretty chill. It wasn't too bad, but it was still shitty because I was working so much and I never felt like I was actually gaining any traction in life. And it kind of felt like that was a permanent location of mine. Like I felt like despite me believing that I was intelligent, despite me not doing terrible with when it came to my grades, you know, like any time I did bad in school, it wasn't so much because I didn't comprehend something. It was because I just didn't care about it. So I didn't put that much effort into it. Like I would take a test and I'd know some answers or at least I could have studied a little bit harder and I had the time to do it. I just didn't care enough to do it. Um, so you get a bad grade. Then in hindsight, when you see what you missed, you're like, oh, that was really easy. How did I miss that? Of course. Um, or some classes I did bad in just because the grades were a big part of the, of the grade was showing up and I just didn't show up. Like I, I would do, I would get like A's on all the, uh, all the tests and the quizzes and the projects and the papers or whatever. But my attendance was so low cause I just didn't care enough to show up that I would end up getting like a C in a class where I could have easily got an A just because like 60% of the class, 60% of the score was just showing up, which I didn't do half the time. Um, so, you know, it, it, it was, it was, it sucked seeing yourself a certain way and then having the world around you almost give you different results. If that, if that makes sense, like you believe yourself to be this intelligent guy that can be super successful or achieve things. And the world around you is kind of like, Nope, you are destined to be a gas station worker. And I'm not shitting on gas station workers. I'm not shitting on people that do retail or any of those types of jobs. But the point that I want to make is that it's hard to go from someone that sees himself as great to feeling stuck. That's the thing, feeling stuck in a position where you don't feel great and when it feels like the effort and the work you're doing does not amount to anything and will not lead to anything. Hopefully that you understand what I mean when I say that. So I was feeling like super depressed, super down on myself. And at this point in my life, I had been going through like a series of depression, you know, like a series of different bouts of depression for quite some time. Like I didn't have that many days where I felt like great. Most days I felt really kind of sad and just lethargic and super upset and somewhat demotivated, like motivated enough to make money to pay the bills because I had to, but not motivated enough to really like push myself beyond that for the most part. And so I remember like one day in particular, I felt like super shitty. Um, and it was such a like, boring day and I remember being so broke like I had like no money I was always like negative in my bank account and it was awful and I remember these kids came in like these college kids came in they bought like cigarettes or something and this one guy went to the ATM and he wanted to withdraw money it was like a Friday night I think or a Friday afternoon and he wanted to withdraw some money because I think he was going to the bars later on now again I was feeling like super shitty too because you're working like all the time I remember work some days I would work until like 2 a.m. And it sucks working at 2 a.m. when you're a college student because you see all the other kids around you going out to bars and clubs and parties and then bringing these girls with them. And you're like, man, I'm single. I'm a fucking loser. I'm sitting in this gas station, this corner store at the time. I don't have any friends to really go out with. Where did I go wrong? Like, what's, what am I missing? What's, what's happening here? Like, something, something's not right. All these people are getting, are, they all have the luxury of going out and having fun, enjoying their time with their friends, enjoying the college experience. Meanwhile, here I am, 
I can't even go to class. I can't even go to college. I'm sitting here working at this gas station, making like no money, struggling to just pay rent, barely eating. I'm just eating like Taco Bell, McDonald's literally every day. And these guys are out par partying and having fun. Like, where do we go wrong? There's no way these guys are that much better than me. They're not much smarter than me. I guess they have more money than me, but that's about it. You know, they're not better than me, better than me in any other way. So it all kind of like compounds. It makes you feel that much worse. So I remember as I'm sitting there, the guys leave, you know, they're made, you know, they're joking, whatever, having fun, getting ready, getting, getting ready to go out. And I see in the ATM, like in the little tray where the money comes out, I see like some green. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, there's no way. There's no way that dude like left his money. And part of me was thinking to myself, like, oh, because I didn't see it immediately. This is probably like 10 minutes after they left and it had gotten quiet. Um, no one was really coming in. So I didn't even notice it at first. And I thought to myself, like, you know, I could hold it and maybe if the guy comes back i can be like super honest and then say to him like oh bro you missed your um you left your money here it is and i've done that in the past where people leave their money and um i'll keep it and then when they come up they ask about it and i was like yeah i saw it when you left here it is if i know it's theirs if i don't know it's theirs then it's my money <laughs> but um yeah so i kept it and it was like 20 bucks and i was super stoked because i was like man this would give me like McDonald's and like Taco Bell for the next, next couple of days. Like I was really in the struggle at that time. And um, literally probably like five minutes, not literally not long at all, like five or 10 minutes after I took the money out of that ATM tray, this man walks in, had to have been about maybe five, 11, six feet, like around that height, about my height. And he looked disheveled, like his clothing was dirty wasn't in good shape at all, tattered. And I know some people say like, oh, people pretend to be homeless so they can make money. If they do, fair, cool. You know, I'll still, I, I'm actually, I, I consider myself generous and I would still give money to a homeless person even if I suspected that they were trying to like pull it over on me. It depends, obviously. Like if I know for sure that you're trying to like just pull stuff on people, I wouldn't give you money. But if you seem like you're genuinely homeless and you're genuinely making an effort to like be nice, or you're not like being beggy, but you're just, you know, you seem like you're just being really grateful, then I'll happily give you money. I'm not, I don't think, I think people are a bit too stingy with money. So this guy comes in and he looked homeless based on his clothing. And I noticed that one eye was like gray, like he was blind. And one eye, he had to have been blind. And some people might say, oh, it was contact lenses. He's trying to pull one on you. If he go went through all that effort to pull one on me, whatever fair enough who cares i don't really care that much but from what i could see he looked blind he didn't say a word he never at any point spoke he just came in he looked very upset looked very depressed looked very sad he hands me this card he hands me this card and just looks at me and i read it and i read okay he's deaf which you can't see but based on the card he's deaf clearly he's blind and clearly he's having a rough time he looks homeless and I sat there and thought to myself, because for a minute I didn't want to get, I knew I had like only 20 bucks in cash because I never carry cash and I didn't have much cash to give at the time, especially at that time. And I thought to myself, you know, this dude's coming in, clearly he's having it way harder than I am. I can still see, my vision's not great as you can probably tell with these glasses, but I can at least see out of both eyes. I can hear, I can speak. He may have been mute, I don't know, he didn't say anything, so he could have been mute too. I wasn't homeless, I was struggling, but I wasn't homeless, I had a place to live. In comparison, my life was fantastic compared to his. And I, I'm not saying that in like a negative way to like put him down, but I was quickly thinking to myself like, man, if there's anyone that could use this 20 bucks that I found, this is not my 20 bucks, I found it in the ATM out of pure luck. It's not me, it's him. He could use it a lot more than I could. So I literally reached to my wallet, pulled out the 20 that I just found and I gave it to him. And I was like, you know, here you go, man, hope this helps you. And he gave me this card in exchange. And I always keep this card because it reminds me that whenever bad stuff happens to me, whenever I feel down in life, whenever I feel depressed or unhappy, or I feel like things aren't working out, there's always someone out there who has it exponentially harder than me. And I feel like whenever I think about that, it allows me to kind of reframe everything that's going on in my life and basically shut the fuck up and stop complaining about whatever's happening. Like if bad things are happening to me, I sit there and think to myself like, is it that bad? Eh, I could be blind, I could be deaf, I could be homeless, I could have no one to support me, I could have nothing, 
No, it's not that bad. I, I'm not in that situation. So what am I whining about? It's not that bad. I can always fight. I can always do more or I can always live. You know, I'm, I'm alive. I can do more tomorrow or today or there's new opportunities everywhere that I'm just not seeing, but I can still take advantage of. I just got to look more carefully. Does that make sense? So I know it's probably a long story and I know it probably took me a while to get to the point, but I wanted to kind of share that story because as you go into 2024, I think the message that I want to share with you is 2023 and maybe even 2022, 2021, 2020 might not have gone the way you wanted it to go. It might not have gone as you expected or anticipated, but I think it's best to remember that there are other people in the world, despite how bad you think you have it, if you're watching this, you probably have internet. And if you have internet, you're probably in a relatively safe place where you have the time and you have the freedom or and the ability to sit here for 15, 20 minutes, however long this video is gonna be, and watch this. So with that being said, there are other people that have it harder than you. And I'm not saying that to put whatever you're going through down. Everyone goes through hard stuff. But I want you to kind of understand that you have the power to change things in your life. You're not out of the game yet. As Gary Vee likes to say, I used to watch Gary Vee back in the day. As Gary Vee likes to say, you still have an at-bat. I think that's a good statement. You have an at-bat. You still have the opportunity to hit the ball. You may have been missing. You may have been getting strikes all these years, but you can still hit the ball. And I think that opportunity to hit the ball is extremely valuable and should not ever be forgotten. So understand this. There are people out there who have it worse than you. Hope this video made sense. Hope this video helped. Hope it motivated you and hopefully it got you sparked up and ready to kill it in 2024. I want to see you win and I'll see you on the other side. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. If you liked the video, please like it. Please leave a comment if you would like to leave a comment. And please, most of all, subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy the video. Hope to see you in the next video. Peace out. Bye.